Hey guys, I want to show you all the new features in OpenJS Grid version 1.5. There are a lot of them. This is probably the most features packed into a new release that I've had in a while. Um, I'm not going to go through this list. I'm just going to jump right in and let's get started. Uh, the first big thing that we changed is the CSS of the right-click menu. In 1.3, this is what it was, but in 1.4, that got taken away. I overwrote it. So now this is the context menu. You can see it's very cool and it looks nice and it's got a nice X button. I'm sure you guys wanted the X button back. Um, another thing it does is it's smart. It's w aware of its surroundings. So if I right click too close to the side, it actually will swing out to the left side of the page here, which is really nice so that your right click menu doesn't go off into nowhere and you can't read it. Uh, while we're in here, you can see that there's a check all and uncheck all option that wasn't there before. Because I'm in a, a column that has checkboxes, I can use that and check all and uncheck all for all those. And those options are not there if you are not in a checkbox column, which is very cool. Um, I added save success and save fail callbacks. So if we go up to here and we head over the top, you can see that now you can set save success and save fail, and that's for the editable grids. Um, you can act, you also have delete success and delete fail when deleting on since all those features were added in 1.4. Um, another thing we have is the grid button class. Um, so if we go down to, uh, we should have grid button. Basically, you can now have a button that's the same style as all the other buttons in the pager, which is really nice to have. Um, linking. So we have a new super advanced way of linking. So if we check this out, we see these links here. Uh, this basically links and it uses the data from the subject and the bug and puts it in the body of an email. So I click it and I, it's, just a, it's just a standard mail to link but it actually has all that extra data in it, something you couldn't do before. Before you could only get the data from this one column. So let's look at how to do that. If I go to bugs.php right here, um, basically we have our value which is the value of the current cell. We've always had that but now in square brackets you actually put the value or the column name from other columns. So bug short and bug long which are on the table here, bug short and bug long. And with a brand new data handling uh, in the system that allows you to pass any data from PHP over to JavaScript, um, we can now pass in other things like the user ID. User ID is not on this table anywhere, but I can still use it here in this column. So what is this good for? Well, uh, this bugs table, you want to be able to click the username and go directly to that person's edit page. Well, the edit page doesn't take the username, it takes the ID. So, using this new technique, I can actually edit this user. You can see the uh, URL down there actually has their user ID in it. And the new data handling, not only does it make it available for use for this kind of thing, you can also search by it. So, I see their ID is 29894. I can actually do 29894, hit enter, and that actually finds them. I just searched for information that isn't on the grid, and they showed up. So, it's very cool in that aspect. So, how does that work? Because I'm sure you're curious about that. Um, again, here's the JavaScript side. You just tell it what column it is. On the PHP side, it's really simple. All you do is you put it in the fields. That's all I had to do. And the reason I had to do this in the first place is because um, the what gets put in the MySQL select box is only these eight columns. So therefore, the user ID is not one of these eight. So in my fields, I just add it right here. And that says, use this, use add this user ID to my select. And because of the way OpenJS Grid 1.4 now handles data without reorganizing it. That means that this can come in and not ruin the order of the table. And using a brand new object called um, data col uh, column, sorry, row data. Row data now is available to actually get this information. So in JavaScript, it's really simple to do those token replacements. This is very cool and really great for linking. Um, so now you and so essentially what we've got is hidden columns. So I've got a hidden column of user ID here. You can't see it. It's not on the table, but the data is there. And you're thinking, where's the data? Well, if I go to open, I go to the grid file here, and I just scroll down, and I'll just say console.log um, grid.data. And if I open this up and refresh, I can see here's my object, and down here is a new whoops there's a new variable called row data which when i open that up 
shows me here's all the columns I have including columns that aren't on my grid and I can open that up and it shows me here's all the rows that are on that column and here's the data that's in each of them so now I've got a JavaScript object of all the data off the grid and then if you want all the data on the grid that's in column ops as it always has been and here's that information and here is the column data and style and all that stuff it's very cool very nice and easy to use um, so moving on the max length also uh, so if we go to a grid such as uh, such as discounts so discounts has this um, text field so we have max length set max length set I believe let's make sure that uh, discounts max length is set so it actually pulls that from the database well that information is now actually available um, here oh, that's no let's go to one that actually uh, max length not there <laughs> I know one of these has it. There we go. Max length 45. So it actually, instead of it being in some some random separate object like it was before, it's now in column ops, which makes it really great for coding. So max length. We also have an awesome feature for, let's go to user control, for confirm delete. And this has been a hugely requested feature. So if you actually click delete, it won't delete right away. It'll actually say, are you sure you want to delete? And it says Richard Osborne. How did it know that? Well, you can actually give confirm delete a column to delete by. So if I go to the JavaScript behind that uh, user list, I say delete confirm, which is the property of set, and I just tell it what column I want. And that will actually go into the column using the new data handling and pick out the data, which is really great. So I can say name, and if I wanted to say, say I wanted email, if I were to refresh this, it would then pick out his email. Are you sure you want to delete this person's email? And if I didn't want to choose a column, I just wanted to say, are you sure you want to delete? You can just say true, and that will just say a generic, are you sure you want to delete? So it's really, really nice uh, for being able to delete special columns such as name, which is a concatenated field, mind you, and I can actually delete by it. So really, really simple done. Um, biggest new feature I'm sure you guys are really want to know is the date range feature. Actually, before I do the date range, um, I've got the pager down here. You can actually change the location of the pager. So if I want this to be at the top, so underneath the last 10 orders, um, that's on stats. I can actually say uh, pager location, and I can actually make that top instead of bottom. And if I save that, you can see the pagers now appear and you can even use both so now you can have two pagers on one grid and they both do the same thing even as I type you can see they type in both locations so and they both basically do the exact same thing because the way it was written it was actually really easy for me to do this which is awesome so how does date range work well date range you just set a column that is the date that you want to do the range by and then all of it is done for you back in the class so date range I want it to be the purchase date so in this case this is this date so if I look at um, what I've got, I've, the latest date I have is 119. So let's search for between 117 and 119. So I'll choose January, oops, January 17th through January uh, 19th and hit go. And that will actually give me, now it's only 128 results. So you can see here's the 18th and here's the 17th. So now you can see I'm actually have a date range. It's really nice. And what if you want to do from some date until now, you can do that too. You can say from 17th until now, now being blank. So if I enter nothing in, it's going to do till now, which is awesome. So date ranges are here. Um, I know that's been a big feature, which is great. I actually fixed a couple bugs as well with some re with Chrome reordering the order of things so you couldn't actually sort and with some make, make select not actually working sometimes. So there you go. Uh, we've got an awesome new feature set for OpenJS Grid 1.5. I encourage you to download it from squarebracket.com slash OpenJS.